All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's online workshop. Today's topic is making custom templates in the site editor. So custom templates um, is something that came out with the with a recent update to WordPress. I think it was end of last year. And they the features have really improved compared to say a year ago when the templates first got introduced. Um, so today I'm excited to show you what custom templates are and how you can use them on your site. So for those who don't know, I'm Ben. Um, I have been a WordPress user since 2014. Um, so WordPress is turning 20 this year and I've been using WordPress for nine years. So I know about half the life of WordPress. Um, um, so that's, that's interesting. Um, I am bilingual in English and Japanese. Um, so I do these online workshops in both languages. Today will be English. And um, I actually did this same topic in Japanese last week and we found some, uh, had a really good time there. So I'm hoping we have a good time today as well. Um, for those who are new to online workshops, I just wanted to explain what an online workshop is. Um, this is a space where we learn together. So I've come here with a specific topic and I plan on sharing with you all, but um, anybody is free to share um, information about this. So if you have questions, drop them in the Zoom chat. Um, and if you know the answer to someone's question, you are free to go ahead and answer that. Um, these sessions are recorded and posted to wordpress.tv afterwards. Um, so people who couldn't attend this session can watch it also. And um, online workshops are hosted by people in the WordPress community who just want to um, give back to the community. So if you're interested in hosting online workshops like this one, um, let us know and we will show you how you can get involved as well. <clears throat> All right, so let's start with a question. How familiar are you with editing templates in the site editor? So today we'll be looking at editing templates. How familiar are you with this? So if today is the first time you'll ever be editing templates, that would be a one. And if you edit templates every day for work or you're a designer or you're a theme builder, you would be a 10. So from one to 10 on that scale, where would you think you would fit? How familiar are you with editing templates in the site editor? <clears throat> All right, so we have, we have a six, a seven, a 10. Oh, we have a 10, an eight out of a 10. All right, so we have people with pretty good experience. And then we also have a couple of ones, a um, couple of fives. Okay, so we have people from all different levels of experience here today. Um, not at all familiar, one or two, that's totally fine. Um, today's session is going to be centered around me demonstrating using custom templates. So if I do something and you're like, hey, wait, what did you just do? Uh, feel free to pause me, um, let us know. Like you can ask, can you, can you show me what you did there again? And I can explain it again. Um, and hopefully even for those who have experience, you might learn something new about custom template editing today. We'll see. Okay. So today, um, let's see. Oh, first of all, briefly introduce the site editor. Um, and then I want to give a, a bit of a word about editing the homepage. Um, then we will be talking about editing template parts, first off, and finally finishing off with creating custom templates. Creating custom templates is what that slide should say. There we go. Creating custom templates. Um, so I don't have a lot of information in my slides specifically, but I will share the link um, in the Zoom chat here. So you can take that home with you um, and have a look at those slides later on again if you want. <clears throat> Elisa says, I always recommend going back to the video and reviewing slower if it moves too fast. That's a, that's a very good point. That's another reason why we record these sessions. So um, you can always go back, see what I did again, play it at like half speed um, so you can follow along also. I'll try not to go too fast, um, but there, there is a bit of content I want to get through today. 
Um, so today I'm going to be working with a local WordPress installation, um, which means the WordPress is hosted on my computer, but this is the same as hosting your WordPress site um, on, on an external host. Um, I'm using a software called Local to do this. We'll be using WordPress 6.1.1, which is the most current version of WordPress. We'll be using the 2023 theme, which is the newest default theme that comes with WordPress. Um, so you, you get to see the most new and um, snazzy um, features that come with WordPress. And finally, no additional plugins or code. So um, until recently, if you wanted to really edit your theme or the templates, you had to, be, you had to have coding skills. So you would go in, edit the theme file to make adjustments to your theme. With templates, with the um, custom templates we'll be looking at today, you really don't need any code at all to build out your own design on your site. So that's really exciting. And hopefully everybody else can see that excitement today also. <clears throat> so I wanted to show you this site right now. Um, this is the um, end site we're going to be working towards. So I've already made um, edits to this site, to the custom templates and the custom template parts. Um, and this is what we'll be working towards. And um, what I wanted to point out is you have a list of posts here. So this is just your normal blog page. Um, but if I click on fireworks by the river, and if I click say happy new year here, they're both posts, they're both just normal blog posts but the layout of the post page is totally different. So this fireworks one, you see it just has one big featured image and a very simple footer. Whereas over here for the happy new year one, you have a featured image, you have a title, you have um, text, you have um, tags and categories, and then you have leave a reply. Um, and then you have a, a more snazzy footer at the bottom here. And this is where I am using custom templates. So both of these are identical posts um, in the back end of WordPress, but when shown on the front end, because they have different custom templates applied, the layout of the post or the design is completely different. So today I'm gonna to show you how you can build custom templates and apply them to your different posts. So your different types of posts can show differently on your website. Um, and this is what we're starting with. So over here, this is a basic 2023 um, theme installed on WordPress. Um, I've gone and added a couple of um, posts here just so we have content to work with today. Um, but these are all just normal posts. So let me open the fireworks by the river. <clears throat> um, so this is the 2023 design. You have a huge featured image at the top. Then you have title text, tags, comments, etc., and a footer at the bottom. Um, and you'll see the Happy New Year post is exactly the same as well. So at the moment, both these posts are just using the default template, and we're going to be changing this to use custom templates. Hmm. Okay. So just a reminder to folks, the blog posts are displayed via the query loop loop. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Query loop block. Um, so yes, we'll we'll be having a look at that in just a moment. All right. Before we dive in, were there any questions? Anything people want to clarify before we get started here? Doesn't look like it. I think we're all eager to jump in. So let's start. All right. So I just wanted to point out we're using a basic um, WordPress installation here. We're using the 2023 theme. Um, there aren't any plugins. Um, and yeah, so first of all, uh, when you want to edit the design of your site, you would go to Appearance Editor, and this opens this site editor. So when you want to edit the content of your site, you would edit your posts and pages. But when you want to edit the design of your site, you would go to Appearance Editor and edit the design through the Site Editor. Um, so for those who are new to the Site Editor, I just want to clarify, 
The site editor is for editing the design of your site. Now, once you're in the site editor, um, if you click on the uh, WordPress logo at the top left, you'll see we have three menu items here under editor. We have site, which is site editor, where we are right now. We then have templates, and then we have template path. So let's click into templates. Today's topic is custom templates. So this is where we'll be working from today. You'll notice we have a, a dozen or so templates here already. And these are provided by the 2023 theme. So depending on the theme you're using, you'll have a different number of templates already built into your site. And um, the 2023 theme comes with two, four, six, eight, nine, nine templates. Um, but recently with WordPress, they've added a add new button at the top here. So you can add different templates to your site. And at the very bottom, we have custom templates. So this is what we'll be working with later. Um, so your theme comes with a certain number of templates already, um, and you can add more templates to your site um, depending on your needs. In the left menu, we also have template parts. So I'll click here. Again, the number of template parts determine, uh, this depends on what theme you're using. So the 2023 theme comes with four pre-built template parts. Template parts are like blocks used inside templates. So for example, we have here the footer and header template parts. So multiple templates use the same header and the same footer. So rather than having to build out the same header in each template or the same footer in each template, what this theme has done is it's made a footer template part and then it's added that same template part into multiple templates. So if you want to edit the footer of your site um, and you want to edit all your templates at once, you can edit the footer template part and then every template that uses that template part will get updated in one go. All right, so template parts are the building blocks for templates. Um, so we have a question, are the templates listed under add new defined by the theme or by WordPress core? So I presume you're talking about the list of um, these here. What you're seeing on my screen right now is determined by WordPress core. Um, and then if your WordPress site has custom post types, we're not going to go into details about that, but if you have custom post types, then you will be able to build templates for those custom post types as well. So these options will grow if your site has custom post types. But basically what you see right now should come with every WordPress site that has a block theme installed. All right. Great. So. <clears throat> Let's go back to our site. All right. So at the moment, the 2023 theme has this simple header. And if you look at the site we're trying to get to today, you'll see I've updated that header like this. So the way I did that was I edited the header template part so that the header changes to that new header on every single page and post on my site. So um, let's, start, let's start with that today. So we're going to edit the header template part. Okay. Spencer asks, can you build loop items with the site editor? And the answer is yes. Um, you can build things with the query loop block in the site editor as well. You can definitely do that. All right, so we're editing the header and I'm going to open the list view. This really helps me see what we're working with. Um, but really, I'm just gonna get rid of all this. Um, this. This header is nothing like the header I'm trying to build here with a logo, a site title and a menu. So I'm just going to delete this entire group block. Then, I'm going to make a new header and the, how I'm going to do that is I'm going to click on the plus and I'm going to click on patterns. So 
The default WordPress installation comes with many different patterns you can use for your site. So for this one, I'm building a header. So I'm going to go to headers. And then if you scroll through headers, um, there's this one here with a logo at the top, your site title here, and then a menu underneath it. This is exactly what I want. So I'm going to click on that. And that adds all these blocks into my header for me. Okay. So I open this again. And now if you look in the header group, you'll see I have a site logo, a site title, and a navigation. So I'm going to click on the site logo. And by clicking on this blue circle here, I can add a site logo. So I've already uploaded some images onto my site. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and choose a site, an image there. And then if you want to edit how this logo appears, you can click on the cogwheel at the top right, the settings button. And this will give you the settings for this logo block. So for example, I want to make this logo rounded. So I click on rounded. And then I also want to use this as my site icon. So if you look in my browser at the moment, the site I'm working with has the default WordPress logo. Whereas my completed site over here has my site logo in the browser tab. And this setting is this right here. So when I set this logo block, if I have use as site icon turned on, it will also change the site icon here. So let me save that and just make sure that does get applied. So I click on save. You can see that the image is rounded. And then let me just refresh the play page and you'll see the site icon changed up here. So that was a setting inside the site logo block, okay? Um, then next we have the site title block. So custom templates, um, we can just, will it make the site title whatever we want? Um, today's practice site. And then a navigation menu. So um, this isn't the main focus for today. So I'm just gonna quickly go through and um, create a navigation menu here. But basically what you would do is you would click plus, and then you can add um, different pages you already have on your site. So I think I have a contact page. So I can add that. I'll also add a sample page. So I'll add that. Um, what other pages did I have? Home and home page. Um, so the home page is a bit. Um, difficult because at the moment, my home page shows my latest post. It isn't actually a page. So I'm going to make a custom link here. So I've got the word home, click on link. And I'm going to edit this to a simple slash, just one slash. And by making it one slash, this now links to the home page. And we'll have a look at that in a moment so you can see what I'm talking about. So I do want to bring this up here, which brings the home to the left. All right, so this is looking very similar to the heading I was hoping for over here. So let me go ahead and press save. All right, and so this is the site we're working on. This is what the header looks like right now. I've just gone in and edited the header template part to look like this. Let's refresh this page and make sure the header is applied. And yes, it is. So just to review, what I was doing right now was I was editing the header in template parts. And that header is used all over the site. So once I saved my changes, you can see the header changed on the main page. Um, if I refresh a post, you can see the header changed on the post as well. So that header changed all across my site. And if you go back here to template parts, you'll notice now there's a small blue dot here. And this dot means this template part has been edited. So it's not the default template part that came with the theme. It's now been edited by me. And once there's a blue dot, you also have a new menu appear on the right here. 
If you click on the three dots, there's an option to clear customization. So if you say want to remove all your customizations and go back to the default template part that came with the theme, you can click on this and clear all your customizations. There's just one warning I want to give, and that is once you click, once you click this, clear customizations, there's no confirmation message. Like usually there might be a message, are you sure you want to delete your customization? And then you click yes or no. But at the moment with WordPress, there's no confirmation message. So if you accidentally press this, there's no going back. All your customizations are lost. So just be very careful when you clear your customizations um, because it can delete hours of works you've put into your custom templates. All right, let me pause there once and see what questions have come in in the chat. And if you have any other questions, feel free to ask those as well. Um, so thank you to those who have already sort of chimed in and answered some of these questions. Um, M asks, can you create additional headers and footers instead of changing it? Yes, that's what we're going to do right after this. So just um, look forward to that. Um, M, you also ask, um, can you have more than one logo defined for the site? Wes answers, I think as soon as you change the site logo back, the image changes everywhere where the site logo block was added. Yes, so a site can only have one site logo. Um, that's just the way WordPress is. Um, you can only have one site logo on your site. Um, Elisa says it'd be nice to have more than one logo, like without text or some areas. Yeah, so what you would want to do there probably is make different templates. So for this page, if you just want a simple logo, edit the template and rather than using the logo block, you could use an image block and put that other logo in, your second logo in, in an image block inside the template. So it's not actually a logo of the site, but you could still apply it to different pages. Um, that might be one way to go. Spencer says, can a logo use conditional logic? No, um, you can only have one logo on your WordPress site. Laura says one logo is good for SEO and accessibility. Okay, that's good to know. Um, Roger, so the 2023 theme has no PHP anymore, but similar to how all the themes had the template files and template parts, like in the templates hierarchy, we'll have HTML files defining it all. Is that a pretty general way of putting it? All right. so. Others who have experience with editing templates might be able to give you a better idea here. Um, but now the way WordPress themes work, if my understanding is correct, themes are stored in what is called a theme.json file. Um, so it's not HTML. Wes, do you know what the language is? Like the programming language or? It, it's not HTML. Well, blogs are sort of HTML. So yeah, I'm not going. I'm not going to give a half answer here, but um, maybe somebody else has an answer. Maybe somebody else with experience can answer this question. Laura says yes. You can edit the theme.json file. Um, they're written in JavaScript. Okay, that's the answer we want. All right. So. We just edited the header custom, sorry, the header template part. And there was a question before, do you have to edit the header and footer or can you make a new footer? And the answer is yes, you can make a new footer. So if you have a look at our site at the moment, you'll notice the 2023 um, footer looks like this, but so has the site title on the left and proudly powered by WordPress on the right. If you look at my finalized site, um, you'll notice, let's see, for this post type, I've kept that same footer. So I'm still using that simple footer. But on the main homepage, I have a snazzy footer here with images and color, and it's different. So on my site, I'm actually using two footers. Some templates use this big image footer, and some templates still use that simple footer. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this footer as the simple footer. 
And I'm going to make a new footer template part for my site. Okay, so we're still looking at template parts. If you click on add new, you have an option to create a general template part, which can be used anywhere in the page. You can build a header template part, or you can build a footer template part. Um, so I'm going to build a new snazzy um, footer template part. So new footer with image. All right, that's the name. It's going to be a footer and I'm going to click create. So when I build the header, header, I clicked on patterns and I choose the pattern from here, which made building a header really easy. But sometimes um, what you're looking for isn't here. Um, I mean, there are dozens of patterns you can use here, but sometimes there isn't something that is perfect. And so WordPress also has what is called a patterns directory. So let's see. The link is wordpress.org patterns. So I've dropped that into the Zoom chat here. And here, there are hundreds, if not thousands of patterns built by WordPress um, users like you and I. So we can build um, patterns in our sites and then submit that to wordpress.org. And there's a, there's a check um, before it's published just to make sure everything's appropriate. Um, but these patterns you see here are all designed by the community. So, I mean, if you, if you start looking through this, you could spend ages trying to find the perfect pattern. Um, so I actually spent some time beforehand to find a pattern I liked, and I found this pattern here. Um, when you find a pattern you like, there's a um, add to favorites button you can press. So whenever you come back to the patterns directory, you can click on favorites, and you can find all the patterns you saved as a favorite here. Um, so, um, so this is the pattern I want to use. Now, the way to bring a pattern from the pattern directory into your site is very simple. At the top, you have a copy pattern button. So you press that, then you come back to your site, and here you'll see where. Um, we're inside the paragraph block right now. Inside the paragraph, paragraph block, you right click, click paste, and then that pattern from the pattern directory is brought into your site. Now at the moment you can see the image is sort of cut off, um, but that will fix if we just refresh the page. Let me refresh the page. All right. So you can see that pattern we found on the pattern directory is brought in to my site. We, we can open this up and see what all the blocks used here are. Um, and then all I have to do is change the images and text to the image and text I want. So I click on the image, I click on replace, and then from my media library, I can change that to my own image. Um, as everybody here knows, that isn't really me, that's just a, an image I found somewhere online. Um, but you can also change the size in the block settings here. So 200 pixels looks good. And then I'll add here, oops, let's see. This is not an image of Ben. Um, and then also the cover block in the background here, I wanted to change that to my own image. So again, I click on the image I click on replace of the media library, change that to the image I want. <clears throat> and there you have it. That's my new footer. So I'll click save. You can always see the name of the template part you're working on here. So this shows I'm editing the new footer with image template part. Um, so let's go back. Let's go to template parts. And you'll see now we have a fifth template part. And this wasn't, didn't come with the theme. It was created by B. Sun Evans. That's my WordPress login username. Um, and you can see new footer with image. So we now have two footer template parts on our site. 
Now, the thing to remember is though, I, I come back to my site and even if I refresh my site, the footer hasn't changed yet. And that's because we now have to replace the standard footer with this footer in the custom templates. So the home page, so now, now that we've made all our template parts, we'll go into template. So the home page is using the home template. So we open that up. Um, and you can see here, that's the home page. We click on blocks, you'll see the home page is built from a header, a group block, which has um, a query loop inside. So there was a question before, can you lose the query loop in the site editor? Yes, you can do that. And then we have the footer at the bottom here. Now, um, the footer, I, I want to change that for that new footer template part I built. So I'm just going to remove the footer altogether. And then I'm going to add a new block after the group block. So we're at the bottom of the page here. And I'm going to click on the plus. I'm going to go to blocks. And then I'm going to search for the name I gave my template part. So I think I called it new, there we go, new footer with image. So you can see here that custom template part I built is listed along with all the other blocks on my site. So I click on new footer with image and that brings that new template part into my homepage for me. So now if I click on save, save, and I come back to this and if I refresh the page, you will now see that new footer on the page here. All right. Um, and then, so let's see, um, on the bottom of the post, we want to change the footer on the post as well. So the way to do that is we've come back to our site editor. We click on the logo, we go to templates. Um, posts by default use the single template. So just keep in mind the word single, this connects to the posts on your site. So we open single um, and we have a look in the list view. And again, you see it's using the default footer at the bottom. So we'll remove the footer and we'll add the new new footer with image template part, custom template part at the bottom here and click save. And now if I come back to my post and refresh, you'll see the footer has changed to that new footer with an image. Okay, so what we did right now was we built a new custom template part and then we applied that new custom template part inside the home template and the simple template so that the new template part is applied to the site. All right, let me pause there and see what questions have come in on the Zoom chat. Um, so, Roger, M, and Laura, and Wes, it seems you've um, continued the conversation about the files. So, thank you for doing that. M, there was no error message that out text is missing, alternate text is missing. Is that, is that related to the conversation? Is that a new question? Um, maybe maybe you can uh, uh, Yeah. I think it was just a comment about when you added the image, there was no error message. Oh, okay. All right. Um, Um, so let me go to Drake's question first. Drake says, if you had not searched for the new footer block template part, would it appear under the themes blocks within the add block menu? All right, so let's, let's quickly check that. So before I showed everyone, I clicked on blocks and then I searched for my new footer with image. But if we didn't search for it, where would that block appear? And my site has frozen. 
that's not a good sign. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's okay. Let me let me just close that once. Let me open the dashboard and see if we can get back to it. So we're working in the site editor, which is here. It looks okay. All right. So um, if we wanted to add, let's see. So blocks. Um, the new footer with image block appears here. So it is under the theme blocks. You'll see template path, header footer, new footer with image. Yep, great. So that answers your question. Um, Elisa, you say your footer has white space below it. Can we remove that? So you are talking about this space here. Um, and yes, I believe you can. Um, so let's see. Um, yeah, let me just say, yes, you can. Um, and you do it with the um, dimension, what's it called? It's called. Old dimension, the dimension setting of the block. So you'll have to figure out what block the dimensions are actually on. It could be the cover block, it could be a group block, it could you, you have to figure out which one it is. And so um, I usually look at the code of this page to figure out where this gap is coming from. But by added editing the dimensions here, you should be able to edit this white gap. With that. That looks like it might be it. So what's that? Dimensions padding bottom. What happens if I click that? Looks like a block gap. Yeah, I'm, I'm not making any promises. Yeah, that's not the one. Block gap. Inspect. Um, yeah, Ben, if you yeah, if you click on the three vertical dots, um, you can try margin, see if it margin? allows you. Yeah, and then say margin bottom. Do that. Yeah, it doesn't seem like the space is coming from there. Yeah, so it's not that. Yeah, it's here. Yeah, what's that? Yeah, block. It's the themes block gap. All right. Yes. Yeah, so it's it's on the entire content of the page. So that one, it does look like you might have to go into the theme file and edit it. Um, I assume you can just use some CSS if you know how to do it. Yeah, CSS would probably work too. Yep. Yep. All right. So you need to go into theme JSON. So that's something you can't edit with the site editor yet. Um, hopefully, in a update sometime, we will be able to edit that. Um, but anyway, okay. So we've made we've edited template parts. We've edited the and we've made a new custom template part. And finally, we want to make a custom template for this image. So once again, not this image, this post. So once again, if we come to the fireworks, you'll see this post, all it shows is the featured image and a simple footer. So this is, so for example, on my blog, I have a few different topics of posts. I have um, normal posts with just text and updates about my life. And then I also have um, photo posts I post. So they're just photos, they're just like an image from the week or the day or the month. Um, and so for those posts, I don't need text. And sometimes I might not even need a heading. I just need a simple, clean post layout that shows my post for uh, my image for me. So that's the idea I'm going with here. Most of my posts would have this normal post format with a title and text and comments and all what have you. 
and but I want a custom template for my photo post. So that's what we're going to make. <clears throat> so to make a custom template, we come to templates, we click on add new, and we click on custom template. So we can add a new custom template to our site. And I'm going to call this <clears throat> my photo, uh, well, photo posts. So these are, this is going to be a custom template for my photo posts. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. So for my photo posts, I'm going to leave the header there, but I'm going to delete all the other content and I just want the featured image shown and the simple footer. So once again, I'll open the list view. I'm going to get rid of all the other content on the, on the post. So I'm going to get rid of group. I'm also going to get rid of, um, oh, sorry, no, actually, I'm going to keep this simple footer. I'm going to keep the simple footer. And then what I want to add between these two is just the featured image of a post. So I'm going to insert after, I'm going to click on plus, blocks. And if you go featured image, post featured image. All right, and you see there's a square here with a slash through it. Now, this is correct. This is exactly what I want. What we're editing right now is not a specific post or page. We're editing a template. Now, at the beginning of the session, I said template or the site editor is where you edit the design of your site, not the content. So because we're editing a template, there's no image to show here right now. But what this square means is whenever this template is applied to a post, the featured image of that post will show here. Um, and that's exactly what I want. I want the featured image of that post to show up here. Um, so I'm gonna go click save. And um, we'll come back to templates and you'll see now I've added a new template to my list of templates called the photo posts template. Now, once again, even if I refresh, refresh this post, it's going to look exactly the same. And that's because I have to now apply the template to this post. So the template is made, and now I want to apply the template to this post. How do I do that? So I go back to the dashboard. I go to my list of posts. And you see here, we're working with the Fireworks by the River post. If you click on Quick Edit, at the top right here, you'll see template. At the moment, it's using the default template. But if you click that, you'll see my photo post template I just created is in the list here. So I click on photo post, I click update. And now when I go to my fire, oh, not that one, when I go to my fireworks by the river post and I refresh the post, you'll notice there's a header, there's the featured image and a simple footer. So I built a custom template, then I applied the custom template to my post, and that's how I got the layout to change here. There are other ways to um, apply a template as well. So for example, um, let's see, Happy New Year, we want to keep like that. Um, for example, I want to apply the same template to fireworks. So that still has comments and everything. What I can do, here we go, is um, before we did quick edit, um, if you're editing the post, you can find templates right here. So right under the post settings, you'll say template and single. So once again, single is the default template for post. So you click on that um, and we can change the template to photo post from here as well. Click update come to fireworks, let's refresh the post. And you'll notice it's just a featured image with a simple footer. Um, so for example, if you're making a brand new post and you click add new, um, you can go ahead and apply whatever custom template you want right here from the post settings. So if you're making a new post, just as soon as you make the post, change the post template here um, to whatever you want to use. All right, 
Um, let me pause there and see what questions and comments have come in. Uh, let's see. Don, where to set responsive breakpoints? If you group the blocks, you can change the block gap. Um, unsure, maybe additional CSS. Um, depends on the block, that featured image block in the example. Okay, um, so we have a few questions about resizing the image here. And I, I, I do want to get to that. So um, for example, if you look at the fireworks here, you'll see the featured image block by default fills the entire width of the post, which I guess is okay sometimes. Um, but if you look over here, that's not what I have on this post. So I actually have gaps on the right of the post. So how did I achieve that? Uh, let me um, show you. So let's go back to appearance editor. Let's go to our list of templates and we're editing the photo posts block, okay? So if you click on the, the um, post featured image block, you'll notice there aren't settings here to change the width of the image. A lot of blocks have a setting there, um, but the featured image block doesn't. So what I did was I went over to the block settings, clicked on dimensions, and I added a margin to this block. So you click on margin. Um, at the moment, this setting will just add margins on all four sides. I just want to add it to the left and the right. So if you click on the link, that um, in a sense breaks the link. Um, so I can now add margins on top, right, bottom, left um, individually. So for example, um, and then again, you can use this slider here to add margins. I prefer to add my own numbers. So uh, for example, I could go 150 on the right. And then on the left, I could do 150 as well. Oops. There we go. So 150 pixels on both the left and the right. We update that. Let's come back to the fireworks post. And if I refresh the page, you'll notice we now have a margin on the left and right. But we're not quite done yet here. So I think it was, was it Don? Where to set responsive breakpoints? So I believe the question you're asking is, uh, you're, you're thinking about desktop and mobile. So you want to make this post look good on desktop and mobile. Um, and this post looks okay on desktop, but if I switch it to a mobile view, like this and then like that, you'll notice 150 pixels on the left and right of mobile view makes the image tiny. So that isn't exactly what we're after here. So let me come back to the template. At the moment, we, ident uh, we set pixels, but what I um, often use is if you click on this, you can actually change this to a different um, metric. And I like VW. That's viewport width. Um, and so that means, <clears throat> so the number I set here is a percentage against the viewport width. The, it looks at the screen width, the current width of the screen the site is shown on. And I can choose what percentage of that to make margins. So for example, let's, uh, let's make that what, 20%, uh, 15, 15%. And the left, I'll also make that viewport width, make it 15%. So what this says is regardless of how wide or narrow the screen is, keep 15% on each side margins. Let me save that. Let's go back to desktop view. So um, let me refresh the post, all right? So you see here we have pretty much the same type of margins on the left and right. And then if you go to inspect and mobile, you can see um, it calculates the narrow width of the mobile screen and keeps 15% of that width as margins. So I haven't actually set breakpoints, um, Don, like you were asking, but by using the viewport width metric, I can set, in a sense, responsive 
margins and paddings to my block. Um, so I hope that answers your question and um, maybe it was something new for some people as well. Let me pause and catch up on the chat again. Let's see. Um, so we have a lot of, it, it's really good to see the, the communication going there. Like I'm not even part of it. People are answering each other's questions. That's really great to see. Um, is there something I should probably catch up on, Wes? Is there a question that hasn't been answered yet? Um, so yeah, there was one question. Um, I'm kind of responding to that now as well about um, adding more images to your template. Um, images, yep. I've I've just answered it's Shatima, I think you can get to that question. I think I, I answered okay. it, but I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's see, can you make multiple photo on post part? So um yeah, Wes says you can only have one featured image for post. Um and that, that's how WordPress works. Like you can only have one logo for a site, you can only have one featured image for a post. Um but um, you could add more photos to the post content. Um, at the moment, so we're looking at the photo posts um, template at the moment. At the moment, this template only pulls in the post's featured image. However, if you click on insert after, you click on plus, blocks, if you come down to, um, here we go, theme. If you come down to the theme section, there are other um, blocks you can add to this template. For example, there's a post content block. So if I add this block, whatever content is in the post will also show up on this post. Um, so photo post, so at the moment, we now have post featured image and post content. So once I've added this, if you go into the actual post and add image blocks in the post content, those images would also show up um, on the post. Um, for example, so let's see, fireworks at the moment, we haven't added any other images to the post, so it's not showing up right now. But if I go to posts, fireworks by the river, um, and for example, if I add, I don't know, there we go. So add that image, add another image, update. And I come back to the fireworks, then you'll see these images show up here as well. Now, it's all leaning to the left at the moment, so you can edit that again in your um, custom template by adding margins and paddings or moving things to the center, etc. cetera. Um, but that would be how you would add multiple posts, uh, sorry, multiple images to your post. I hope that answers your question. Um, <laughs> Sorry, then there was also a question from Bob mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. about if you can scroll up a bit about CSS. So you can actually get into your customizer to add CSS. Um, but if you just want to have a look at that question as well. Okay. Yep, I see that. 2023 doesn't have any .css file since it does all the CSS in JavaScript. I needed to add some custom style styling. So I created a child theme with a style.css file. This worked fine, but other than being old school, is there any downside to this approach? Um, yeah, so what Wes was talking about is, um, although right now you can't get to custom CSS from um, the menu here, there is a direct link that gets you there. 
Um, so, yeah, yeah, you just say customize. I think it's customize, not customizer. Customize. Yeah. All right. So let me let me just let me just um, do that again, so I can explain what I was doing. So I'm in the dashboard here, and in your dashboard, the ending is probably index.php. So by changing the word index to customize, you can still get to <clears throat> the traditional customizer. And then here, you'll see additional CSS. So um, you can add CSS directly here. Um, the, the concept at the moment is we want to move away from the customizer and we want to be able to add um, CSS to, well, not CSS, but we want to be able to do all design um, editing in the um, block editor. So the customizer is like a, a stopgap between now and that future where everything can be done in the block editor. Um, but that would be simpler than making a child theme. What you did isn't wrong, um, but this is a bit simpler. You can add the CSS directly to your theme. All right, we, we are coming to the end of the hour. Um, so let me just quickly see if there were any other questions. Um, can these photos rotate within the same position? Um, can photos rotate? Uh, was it this one? Prop, does that let you rotate? Here we go, yeah, okay, so. So, um, who was the question from, Chitima? Um, inside the image block, so this isn't related to templates or anything, this is just when editing an image block, you can click on this crop symbol here, and then there's a rotate button here. So you can rotate the image. Um, it's 90 degrees, but you can rotate images like that. All right. Um, Robin, um, you learned today that the site logo block is an example of a one block template part. Hmm. Yeah, I, I guess it is um, because the same logo is applied to all areas of your site. Um, Dan, you say you very much like being able to edit everything in the block editor. Great, because that's where WordPress is going. Um, so I'm enjoying the block editor as well. I'm not a super duper programmer. Like I know a bit of HTML and CSS, but being able to really edit the design of my site in my site editor, and especially with templates now, I can make my own templates. This has really given people, non-programmers, the ability to change their site design the way they want. Um, all right, so we're at the top of the hour. Thank you everyone for joining. Um, did I have any final slides here I wanted to share? Um, that's it, yeah, thank you for attending. Um, we have a individual learner survey. This is where um, the Learn WordPress team is trying to understand what everybody wants to learn. So if you haven't answered this survey yet, the cutoff date is going to be February next month. So we only have a few weeks left. Um, if you could answer that survey, that would really help us. Um, but otherwise, that's all I had prepared today. Thank you everyone for the great interaction, all the great questions. Um, it was good to see everybody answering each other and I learned something new as well today. So thank you very much. And I hope you have a good evening or good morning, depending on wherever you are. Bye. Thank you, Bing. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.